Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to help you get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program. Let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones as well. 866-735-2470 is the phone, or sorry, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products or join the Brightside Ben team, call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start yourself a longevity business, earn thank you checks, and help spread the word about the importance and power of a good nutritional supplement program. Also, of course, you can get your products at the wholesale price. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com and take a look at our shopping cart. And if you're so desire, you can click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, also pharmacistben.com, my blog that I have with my webmaster, Robert Lundgren, pharmacistben.com or brightsideben.com. Okay, try to get on board early today so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010, we're talking dry skin, the most common, the most prevalent of all skin care problems. And one of, the, one of the mythologies about dry skin, one of the mythologies about skin, and there's a lot of mythology in the, in the skincare world. I hear the craziest things from people who suppose should know better, skincare professionals and dermatologists and beauty editors. I hear the craziest, silliest kinds of ideas about how to take care of your skin from people who should know better, but don't. And one of the most common misunderstandings about dry skin that we all have, not just, not just skincare professionals, but most of us have this idea, this mythological notion that ambient humidity, the humidity of the, of the air, how much moisture is in the air, or the lack of moisture in the air is somehow the cause of dry skin. People say, oh, I moved to Colorado from New York or Miami, now my skin is really dry. Or, you know, I live in Nevada, I live in Arizona, I live in the desert, my skin is really, really dry. Well, this is not true. This is a misunderstanding that's based on the illusion that the skin is just sitting there, that it's not a dynamic biological, biochemically active structure. Another myth, uh, myth about dry skin that's related to this idea that the dry ambient humidity is the cause of dry skin, or, or low ambient humidity is the cause of dry skin. Another mythological misunderstanding is the fact that you can eliminate dry skin with a moisturizing cream. Not going to happen. Never did happen. You can fake out your finger. You know, when you rub a moisturizing cream on your skin, and do what most people do. You rub your finger along where you put the, put the cream. You're feeling the cream. You're not feeling, you're not feeling your skin. You're feeling the wax. You're feeling the oil. And then somehow or another, we have been hypnotized into believing that when we rub our finger on the sterile alcohol or the cetyl alcohol or the wax or whatever it is, we're moisturized. Where does this come from? It's a hypnotic trance. 
It comes from not paying attention to what we're doing and believing what we're told, neither of which is a good health care strategy. And dry skin is a health issue. In order to understand how to deal with dry skin for reals, not in an imitation wax oil uh, barrier duplicating kind of way, not in a Vaseline kind of way, but to really deal with dry skin, we got to actually improve the skin's inherent built-in self-hydrating mechanisms. And we got to understand how these self-hydrating, these, these self-hydrating mechanisms, these self-hydrating chemicals, these so-called moisture factors are, are produced. If we're going to really take care of our dry skin, we've got to understand the skin. If we're going to understand our, take care of our dry skin, we've got to understand moisture factors. How is it that the skin stays moist, and what really goes wrong when the skin's not moist? It's like anything else in the body. If we're going to understand how to take care of our body, we've got to understand what exactly is happening when it's going wrong, and what is it supposed to do when it's going right? Same with the skin. If we've got dry skin, what's going wrong? What does it need to do to go right? In order to understand that, we've got to break it down to the cells. The skin cell, and all cells really, but we're talking here skin, the skin cells are like a Play-Doh fun factory. I know I've said it before, but it's important enough that we really, we really hit this hard. Remember back in the days when you played with your Play-Doh when you were a kid, they had this thing called a fun factory. You put your Play-Doh in the top, you squeeze down, and your Play-Doh came out in all kinds of weird shapes and, and, and designs based on the mold or based on the dye that the Play-Doh is extruded out of. That's called extrusion, and that's exactly how a cell works. It extrudes stuff. It squirts it out. It secretes it. Cells are little fun factory devices that instead of Play-Doh are extruding proteins and, and other biochemicals as well. And these extrusions are what keep the body healthy. We always say all disease is cell disease, but what we really mean is all disease is cell extrusion problems or cell extrusion disease. The cells aren't extruding stuff. They're not secreting stuff correctly. When it, when it comes to uh, dry skin, the cells are not extruding their moisture factors. They're not extruding their barrier protection mechanisms or barrier protection uh, factors. This is why, under ordinary healthy circumstances, skin is going to stay hydrated, no matter where you live, because the extrusions are going to keep the barrier intact to trap water. The extrusions are going to, uh, are going to be uh, upregulate or increase the amount of moisture factors that are present. Under ordinary healthy circumstances, you're going to have more and better and stronger extrusions when you come to Nevada or Colorado or Arizona from Miami. That's how it's supposed to work. You go to an area where there's low ambient humidity, your skin adjusts. That's what's supposed to happen. Of course, we know that doesn't happen, and that's a health issue. That is not a moisturizing cream issue. That's a health issue. When it comes to our dry skin and the skin's built-in moisturizing properties, there's two types of cells that we want to focus on. Remember, all disease is cell disease. So if we have dry skin, we've got a cell problem. And there's two kinds of cells that are responsible for, dry, that are responsible for keeping the skin moist and two kinds of cells that, uh, whose, whose misbehavior or whose poor health are responsible for dry skin. So if we're going to really take care of our dry skin, we've got to understand what's going on with these, these two types of cells. One cell is a hormone cell. It's part of the body's hormone system. It's called a sebum, S-E-B-U-M, sebum cell. Now, you guys in the skincare business, I know there's a lot of students listening to this program, skincare students and, and skincare professionals. You all know what sebum is. Sebum is Latin for grease, which isn't necessarily very attractive, but... The point is that sebum is a skin oil. The cells that make sebum are called sebum cells or sebocytes. And if you're going to take care of your dry skin, you got to understand the sebocyte or the sebum cell, which is actually part of the hormone system. The sebum cell is a hormone cell, which means if you got a sebum problem, you got a hormone problem. And if you have a hormone problem, you got a health problem. The sebum cell, the sebocyte, is the source of the majority of our skin oils. It extrudes all kinds of oil-like substances, Play-Doh style, Fun Factory style. It secretes cholesterol. That's right, cholesterol is actually one of the most functional and important of all the skin's moisture factors. Cholesterol, the demon molecule that everybody says you got to avoid, and everybody says you got to lower. It turns out cholesterol is a super functional and super important skin moisture factor produced by SIBO sites. Cholesterol also has growth stimulating properties for healing. All right, got more to say here. Got a couple more. Uh, well, we'll come back and we'll uh, continue talking about dry skin and moisturizers. 844 236 6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. All right, we're 
we're back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Got a couple lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment or two. Bottom of the hour, we'll get your calls, 844-236-6010. If you're on hold, hang on. And we do have lines open for you if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs. If you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, or if you have questions about the longevity products or a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to our conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. And, of course, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, Please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, my personal favorite longevity product, and the BioLumin Nightly Essence. This Friday, uh, day after tomorrow, we're going to talk to the manufacturer of the BioLumin Nightly Essence, the guy who formulated the product, and I'm going to get to pick his brain. I'm very excited about that. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Troy. Not Troy's last name. But anyway, he's the guy who manufactured and form- manufactures and formulated the BioLumin Nightly Essence product. We'll have a conversation with him this Friday. Okay, we're talking moisturization, dry skin. So many people have dry skin. When I do my presentations and my talks about skin anyway, I always ask, how many people have dry skin? <clears throat> Excuse me. How many folks have dry skin? And invariably, almost everybody raises their hand. I say almost everybody because there's a few people who don't, but they probably got dry skin too. Dry skin is just, that's just the way we live. We just assume it's a normal thing. It is not a normal thing. It is the sign that the body is beginning to break down. It's the first sign that the body is beginning to break down because, as we've said so many times on this program, the skin is not considered an organ of first resort for the body. It's not the most important organ in the body because to the body, the heart is more important and to the liver and the digestive system structures, the pancreas and the, and the intestines. So resources under, when resources are scarce, they're going to be diverted to the intestines and the pancreas and the heart and the lungs, etc. So you're going to notice, we're all going to notice skin problems first. That's the first place where the body will go to to get resources when they are in limited supply. So dry skin will occur before other health problems will occur. But rest assured, if you have dry skin, you got a health problem. Now, before we went to break, we said that there are cells in the skin that make moisture factors that keep the skin moist. All disease is cell disease and dry skin is no different. One cell type is a hormone, is part of the hormone system, part of the endocrine hormone system. It's called sebum, or sebum cell, and it makes sebum. Sebum is made up of cholesterol, which is, as we, as we said before the break, one of the most fundamental and functional of all skin ingredients. Yes, it's critically important for brain health, for the health of cells. It's a precursor to making bile and vitamin D and estrogen and testosterone and cortisol. It, it's ridiculously important. Anybody who understands anything about biochemistry just has to laugh when they hear uh, the average doctor, medical professional, or or layperson talk about how they've got to lower their cholesterol or how cholesterol is some kind of problematic molecule. Cholesterol is incredibly, incredibly important for the entire body. And as far as the skin goes, it's a precursor to moisture factors. I put cholesterol in my omega-6 healing cream because cholesterol not only is a precursor to moisture factors and one of the ways the skin keeps itself moist, it also is a growth factor. It supports healing and growth. Cholesterol is a key component of sebum. Fatty acids are found in sebum. And then there's something really interesting in sebum, a real cool molecule called squalene. I love this stuff, man. Squalene is an incredibly, incredibly effective skin moisturizer. It's not an oil. It feels like an oil, looks like an oil, but it's not an oil technically. In fact, it's closer to vitamin A than it is an oil. It actually has a very similar structure to vitamin A. How do you like that? You've got a skin moisture factor that's very, very similar to a vitamin. It's called vitamin A. The skin moisture factor is known as squalane or squalene. Squalene is technically what it is. Squalene is a, is a more stabilized version of squalene. Either way, squalene and squalene. We'll talk a, I mean, we're going to spend some time talking about this stuff because I absolutely love it. It's got to be one of my all-time favorite skin, uh, skin components and ingredients for skincare products, squalene or squalene. You'll see squalene usually in an, in, in, on an ingredient deck or in a product because it's more stable. Squalene or squalane can be ingested as a nutritional supplement. Shark liver is the most important source of squalane or squalene, but you find squalane and squalene throughout nature. You can use it as a nutritional supplement. It's got some interesting properties for, for lowering blood fats, lowering cholesterol. We'll talk about squalane or squalene here probably in the next few days. 
For now, I want to point out that because the sebum gland is part of the hormone system, and the hormone system is intimately related to food and intimate, intimately related to nutrition, or the lack thereof, and even the hormone system is even related to psychological issues and mental issues and emotional uh, components or emotional dimensions of health. All of these impact the hormone system because moisturization is part of the hormone system. Now you've got a psychological and mental and emotional component to your dry skin or your healthy, beautiful, soft, and hydrated skin. There's so many options at our disposal for upregulating sebum secretions, for really moisturizing the skin. It's crazy just to rub wax and oil on top of your skin. And just like there's a lot of options at our disposal for increasing sebum production, there's lots of causes, potential causes anyway, for diminished sebum production and ultimately for dry skin. And because sebum, skin oil, also has antibacterial properties, antimicrobial properties, sun protection properties, sebum is sun protective. How do you like that? The moisture factors that are in your skin, we'll talk about this tomorrow or maybe the next day. The moisture factors that are in your skin, they don't just moisturize your skin, they protect it from the sun. And any bonehead medical professional who tells you to slather on a sunscreen needs to start studying the skin and how it's put together. Because when you put a sunscreen on, typical sunscreen with wax and oil and emulsifier, you're going to suppress your natural sebum production, which means you're going to suppress your natural sun protection properties or your skin's natural sun protection properties. On top of that, now you've got to interface with all the toxicity that's in your typical sunscreen product. I'm telling you, man, if you need a sunscreen or a sunblock because you're going to be burning or you're going to be playing golf or you're on a cruise somewhere, then use it. But get it off your skin when you don't need it and don't use it and don't apply it if you don't need it. The second mechanism for keeping, for keeping your skin soft and hydrated and moist involves the skin cells themselves, the so-called keratin cells or keratinocytes. So the first mechanism for keeping the skin soft and hydrated are the sebum cells that make the skin oils, the cholesterol and the fatty acids and the squalene. The second mechanism are the skin cells that are called keratin cells, keratinocytes. Site, C-Y-T-E, means cell. So you have sebocytes, they make sebum, and then you have keratinocytes, they make keratin. Those are the two main cells in the skin that are involved with skin moisturization. So the keratin cells, the keratinocytes, those are ultimately going to form the barrier, the, the, the water-trapping barrier that keeps our skin from drying out and prevents water loss. Researchers call this T-E-W-L, trans epidermal water loss. And they'll measure TEWL to see how effective the skin barrier is. Or, or they will measure TEWL, transepidermal water loss, to see how effective their moisture, moisturizing wax is. I'll call it a moisturizing wax because that's really what a moisturizing cream and lotion is after you take out the 80% water. The main role of the skin is to act as a barrier as protection for the internal structures of the body and as a covering to prevent um, the entrance into the body of bacteria and fungus as well as ultraviolet radiation and to protect the skin against or to protect the internal vis the internal structures of the body against mechanical injury it's a, a barrier that protects against mechanical injury but the most or one of the most important roles of the of the barrier is to keep moisture in all right we're coming back with more good health information right after We are back on the bright side. Got a couple lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our phone number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. If you've uh, tried to get on board in the past and haven't been able to, now's your opportunity. We do have two lines open for you. 844-236-6010. Let's see, a couple more things I wanted to say. You know what? I think I'm going to do this tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about... I saw a commercial yesterday, television commercial for a moisturizing cream. Of course, it got my attention. It was for a product that is considered to be the go-to moisturizing cream for dermatologists and for pharmacists. It's something we talked about in pharmacy school 25, 30 years ago. It's still around, and it's really an interesting product uh, when you look at the ingredient deck, and we should all be looking at ingredient decks when we make a selection, uh, when we select a skincare product or when we select a food product or a health product, for that matter. We should all be ingredient deck readers. and. The ingredient deck on this one product is really, really interesting, and I'm going to tell you about this tomorrow, and we'll talk about this product tomorrow, 
and then uh, we'll continue talking about dry skin. And then, uh, if not tomorrow, the next day, we'll talk about a protein that you never hear about and nobody even really knows about, a protein that's extruded out of our fun factory skin cells that really, really, really may be the key protein, the key molecule, the key skin structure when it comes to preventing and protecting the skin from transepidermal water loss, TEWL, and to keep your skin soft and hydrated. And also, this protein molecule, as it turns out, has very important sun protection properties, too. And we'll talk about that probably, uh, if not tomorrow, we'll talk about that the next day. Friday, we'll also be uh, talking to uh, my, my new friend, Troy, who I serendipitously met earlier this week, actually late last week. And it turns out that Troy is the manufacturer of my second favorite, Longevity product. My first favorite Longevity product is the uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, of course. My second favorite Longevity product, the one we've that I've been talking about for a long time, the uh, BioLumen Nightly Essence. And I serendipitously, no accents, of course, but I serendipitously ran into uh, the manufacturer of the stuff, and I told had to tell him what a great product it was, and I got to, uh, I, I begged him, and he said, "Yeah, come on the show, and we'll talk some probiotics and." Uh, uh, Troy Opperly, we'll talk. Uh, he's the president of the Enzymo Enzymology Research Center in Minnesota, Miltona, Minnesota. We'll talk to him on Friday. Okay, time to hit the phones, 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Oregon and welcome Todd to the Bright Side. What's going on, Todd? How you doing? Hi, Ben. I uh, actually had the honor of meeting you last time you were here, you were here in Portland, Oregon. I had a picture oh, taken with Todd. you a little bit. Is yeah. this Todd... Uh, Todd, the Cajun guy, my Cajun buddy. Oh, the, the other Todd. There was two of us there. Oh, you're the oh, other Todd. Okay, I yeah, remember I you. Picture taken with you and stuff. But anyway, hey, hey, Todd. I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver and what to do about it. Oh yeah, it's a big problem. Nash, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease (NAFLD). It, you know, they say it affects one out of three Americans, 100 million people, but it's probably more than that. Uh, which is a statement right there, Todd. I mean, how do you have one out of three people in a country who have a significant, a serious health issue? What does that say about a culture? When one out of three people have a significant, serious health problem like fatty liver disease, and by the way, they have to call it non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, because they have to distinguish it from cirrhosis of the liver that alcoholics get. In other words, today, everybody's got the same liver that an alcoholic had 25 or 30 years ago. One out of three Americans, not everybody, but one out of three Americans have the same kind of liver problem that you used to have to drink Jack Daniels out of a paper bag to get 20, 30 years ago. And it's only been 20 or 30 years that this epidemic has hit. What, you guys, if you're in the healthcare business, if you're not in the healthcare business, you may not realize this, but if you're in the healthcare business, it is absolutely mind-blowing, absolutely astounding what has happened to the health of the American public, of the, t of the typical American, just in the last 30 years. I graduated pharmacy school in 1986, 30 years ago, 29 years ago, I graduated pharmacy school, and it was nothing like it was today. Autism and diabetes and, and obesity and skin diseases and cancer and heart disease. All of these things are going through the roof. And we got more doctors and we got more drugs and we got more commercials and we got more health care shows and we got more Dr. Oz's and, and, and representatives of the medical model telling us how to get healthy. And yet we're, we're falling apart. <laughs> Clearly there's something wrong. When it comes to the liver, here's the thing, Todd. The liver is the most multifunctional, arguably, the most multifunctional system in the body. But primarily, it does two things. Well, I, I don't even want to say that. But two of the most important things it does are digest your food and detoxify substances. And by the way, I'm including prescription drugs when I talk about those substances. That means if you have a digestive problem, and now, and by the way, the liver also processes sugar. So if you have a digestive problem and you have a sugar problem and your boneheaded medical professional puts you on a drug, now your liver has to do more work. How, who, who came up with this? Where is the logic here? Who, what organ in the body processes drugs? The liver. So you got a, a, a situation where our livers are overworked because of the food we're eating, digestive problems, blood sugar problems, hormone problems, because, oh, yeah, the liver processes hormones. And now you take prescription drugs. Now you got to add that to the mix. 
So for fatty liver disease, first of all, treat it as a digestive health problem. Fasting, that's the best thing you could do for fatty liver disease and caloric restriction. Using probiotics, there's a very important relationship between the bioluminescence nightly essence, probiotics, and fat metabolism, and the liver does a lot of fat processing. So making sure you're getting on your probiotics, super important for liver health. Bioluminescence nightly essence, of course, and, and listen in on Friday. We'll talk about uh, uh, liver health uh, with, um, with Troy Opperly from Bioluminescence nightly essence on, on this Friday. Use, for, use the flavonoids. Go to uh, brightsidehealthproducts.com. Get the Bergamax flavonoids. Bergamax flavonoids can be very helpful, and all bioflavonoids can be very helpful for the health of the liver. And don't underestimate the importance of vitamin C for liver health. Stupendously valuable for the health of the liver. Of course, you'll get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Stabilize your blood sugar because the liver is along with the pancreas, the most important of the sugar processing organs in the body. If you have any problems with sugar, and by the way, fructose is especially damaging to the liver. So if you uh, have liver disease or you don't want to have liver disease, stay away from high fructose corn syrup and be very careful with fruits and fruit juices. Use the Sweeties, use the Healthy Start Pack. If you want to throw a couple other things in there, get on the Ultimate Selenium, which can be very helpful for uh, liver health. Uh, selenium is an active component of the liver's most important detoxifying element, glutathione. And make sure you're eating qu enough quality protein and using your digestive enzymes and apple cider vinegar with that quality protein. So many things you could do. And don't underestimate the importance of a good fast and just plain old caloric restriction. Uh, vitamin E, if you want to do a couple more things, 400 IU of vitamin E, 20,000 IU of vitamin A, and also coenzyme Q10 can have some beneficial effects for the liver. Look for oil-soluble coenzyme Q10, maybe 100 to 200 milligrams a day. All right, Todd, I got to move on. Thanks for your call, bro. And uh, Thank you. maybe we'll see you again sometime soon in Oregon. I love Oregon. Next to Colorado and maybe Washington State, my favorite state in the union. All right, Lady in Texas, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Um, I, um, I have a skin problem. Okay, oh. we can help you. That's our specialty. Yeah, here on the bright side except we got to take a break lady can you hang on hang on a sec because we'll take a break and we'll come back and and talk skin 844-236-6010 is our number i'm pharmacist ben you're listening to the bright side on the genesis communication network we'll be back after this on the bright side from uh, let's see this article is from nutriingredients.com probiotics may slash triglyceride levels according to a study data from a double blind placebo controlled study with 92 people with borderline to moderate high triglycerides found that a probiotic supplement was associated with a 20% reduction in blood fats. So this is from Nutrition, Metabolism, and Cardiovascular Disease. This is something I've been saying for a long time. There's a really, really fundamental, critical, and not really appreciated relationship between blood fats and probiotics and gut bacteria. And we were talking to uh, Todd earlier about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is a fatty issue, obviously, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease using probiotics via its role in stabilizing and lowering blood fats can be one of the best things you could do to protect your liver, to protect your heart, to protect your blood, uh, just lowering blood fats. And maybe our epidemic of heart disease, maybe our epidemic of blood fat, of elevated blood fats has something to do with dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria. Get on the probiotics, get on the Biolumin Nightly Essence and listen in this Friday. Day after tomorrow, we're going to talk to Troy Opperly about the Biolumin Nightly Essence, which is actually his, uh, his formulation. Okay, lady in Texas, what's going on? Got some skin issues? Yes, um, I have a problem every time I uh, uh, wax or shave or um, any way I do it, my legs, my armpits, anywhere really, I get you like... break out, rashy? Uh, not like all over, but I'll get like clogged up pores or ingrown hairs. Okay. And That's a, really you got a skin thing. Yes, you yeah. got a skin problem. You probably have some other stuff going on. How old are you? Is it Lady? Is that how you say your name? Lady? How do you, how do you say? Lady. Lady. Oh, yeah, okay. I thought, yeah. Okay. How do um, you, um, uh, tell me about, uh, let me ask you a couple other, pro a couple other things. Do you have, uh, other skin problems? Do you break out? Do you have acne or anything like that? I don't have 
too bad of acne, really. Um, what do you mean, wow, well, lady? Not too bad. What do you mean, not too bad? Do you have any? I mean, I genetic- get like. I have, like, maybe one or two, but, uh, and sometimes I don't really break out, but I'll, I do have, like, scars from when I did break out. Okay. Know? Okay. That's from what, what, you're, what you're younger. dealing with. Yeah. What you're dealing with is not that uncommon. It's called PIH, technically, which stands for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation which means you get dark after you're inflamed. So sometimes people will break out in pimples or rashes, and when the rashes go away or the pimples go down, what's left is a dark spot, right? Sound familiar? Yes. Okay, it's very common. You're looking at a hormone issue, an adrenal hormone issue, and probably a female hormone issue as well. Those are the main two causes, the hormone cortisol, which is an adrenal stress hormone. You probably know that. And the hormone yeah. estrogen, which is a female stress hormone. Did you know that estrogen's a stress hormone? Yes, it helps you handle stresses, yeah. like cortisol. Mm-hmm. So, so when your cortisol's up, that means something is burdening your body. It's not a skin issue. Something is burdening your body. The most likely suspect is going to be food and sugar. And when you have an estrogen problem, again, uh, something is burdening your body. Usually it has to do with fat metabolism and food. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start to look for digestive health issues, especially around fats and fatty foods, problems processing fats and fatty foods. Do you have your gallbladder and all your organs, lady? Lady? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, and you sound young, so I'm going to guess that you're still, you're still having your menstrual cycles. Do you have any problems with your periods, any bloating or, or cramping or weird PMS issues or anything like that? I don't get cramping, like really bad cramping. Really um, bad? For, okay. Yeah, That's all related. Day, so. It's all related, all related. All right. Do you crave fatty foods? Do you notice you're craving fatty foods, oily foods, greasy foods, french fries, potato chips, and, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff? <laughs> okay. So I, this is not uncommon, lady. Trust me. I've been doing this for decades. This is not uncommon. <laughs> All right, so you need to start focusing on fats and fat metabolism. You're not getting fats, and that's putting a stress on the body, and you're not, uh, I don't know what that sound is. Can you, can you mute, mute me there, ladies? It's, okay, good. Um, you're not getting enough fats, and you may be having some problems processing fats. So here's what you want to do. First of all, get on the Healthy, healthy Start Pack, and you probably want to take a little extra EFAs, especially around the time of your period. Uh, try to take 9 to 12 a day, 3 or 4, 3 times a day, and you may want to take some extra, uh, maybe, the, maybe when you're having your period or a day before too when you're craving those fatty foods. The fat cravings should go away within one or two cycles once you start your EFAs. And you're going to do the whole healthy start pack. Get on the BioLumin Nightly Essence. Again, probiotics, good bacteria are very important, not just for fat metabolism, but also for estrogen metabolism. Anybody who's got problem periods, anybody who's worried about excess estrogen, they call that estrogen dominance, fibroids, cysts, PMS issues, you'd be very wise to get on that BioLumin Nightly Essence. Probably three to six capsules a day of the Biolumin Nightly Essence, lady. So you got the EFA, Ultimate EFAs, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, the Healthy Start Pack. Get yourself on the Ultimate Enzymes. Make sure you're taking them with all your meals, three or four of the Ultimate Enzymes after all meals or with all your meals, and then do some apple cider vinegar along with that. And there's a couple other nutrients that you probably would be wise to use um, in addition to all the longevity products. Vitamin E can be very helpful for you. 400 international units a day of vitamin E. 20,000 IU a day of vitamin A. Get yourself on zinc picolinate, P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E, zinc picolinate, 50 milligrams a day. All of these are going to have a very beneficial effect for your post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Uh, Make sure you're sipping on the BTT, and if I were you, I'd be throwing in a little extra vitamin C. You can get vitamin C powder, maybe take an extra 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams a day of vitamin C powder. If you uh, really want to go all out, go get some progesterone cream and then uh, use the progesterone cream three weeks a month. Or you could use it every day, really, three, three to four weeks a month. And then um, topically for the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, I would get all my truth products, either the retinol balm, that will help peel away, uh, slough away the pigmentation. But if you use the omega-6 healing cream or the truth serum or the truth balm on a daily basis, that will prevent the hyperpigmentation from even occurring in the first place. And And if you put them on the zits or the rashes or after you shave, if you use the truth serum after you shave, you're not even going to get the irritation. That will calm down the irritation. So you won't even get the the hyperpigmentation at all. You could find the truth serum. That would be the product I'd recommend for you, the truth serum. Uh, You can find out uh, all about that at truth treatments.com truth treatments.com got four products up there soon to have some nutritional products thanks lady appreciate it anything else thank you okay, um no, 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 thanks okay good take care okay uh let's see now we get a full board going on mike in texas what's up welcome to the bright side mike did you say mike, did you say I mike? Said mike. yes sir what's up mike how you doing man 
Pretty good. I, uh, thank you for your time and your work, Ben. Thank uh, you. I appreciate uh, that. Two questions. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Two questions. One, uh, here a while back, a couple of weeks ago, my daughter noticed my grandson. He's close to two. When he'd get a little bump on his head, he would start shaking and his eyes would roll. And okay. I took the doctor and just found out he was epileptic or yeah. possibly going to do checkups. Okay, that's a seizure. That definitely sounds like a seizure issue. Sugar is the one thing that you want to watch out for right away, okay? In fact, go look up the ketogenic diet, and I'll spell that for you. It's K as in King, E, T as in Tom, O as in Oscar, G as in George, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, I as in Igloo, C as in Cat. Anybody who has a seizure problem needs to be studying the ketogenic diet. First of all, everybody should be at least experimenting with a ketogenic diet because it's a powerful health-inducing way to eat. It's a moderate protein. It is low, low, low levels of refined sugars and flours and carbohydrates and high fat. And this is something we talk. I, the bright side diet is basically a modified ketogenic diet. It's the healthiest way to eat. Low calories, especially low carbohydrates. And by carbohydrates, I'm talking bread and flour, not vegetable carbohydrates. You need all the, you need, he needs his vegetables. And then uh, moderate protein and then high fat. Google the ketogenic diet. There's also uh, other nutritional strategies he could use. The B vitamins are stupendously important for brain electrical energy. And obviously, a seizure disorder is an electrical malfunction in the brain. Using the healthy start pack, especially the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, have the boy sip slowly on a very small amount of beyond tangy tangerine throughout the day you got to keep them off of the sweets and the sugars not only will that uh, throw off uh, will, that will induce seizures uh, seizure disorders especially low blood sugar or high blood sugar but it will also deplete his body of electrical nutrients which can make matters worse so keeping him away from the pop tarts and the fruit juice and the soda pop and the muffins and all the things kids like to eat super important but also making sure he's using sugar metabolizing nutrients and electrolytes so the b vitamin is very important but but also potassium and sodium and calcium and magnesium, especially magnesium, which can have a wonderful effect for slowing down brain electrical energy and kind of stabilizing conductivity issues, magnesium that is. And then also if he wants to, if he, I don't know if he can take supplements or not, but there's a couple really neat ones, glycine, G-L-Y-C-I-N-E, GABA, G-A-B-A, and also lithium, lithium orotate. Those can also have nice stabilizing, brain stabilizing effects for electrical energy. So many things you could do. Most importantly, the ketogenic diet and keeping the kid away from fast-burning carbohydrates and sugars. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate your call. Uh, sorry if we let you on hold. Call back tomorrow. We'll get you first up. 831-685. I'm sorry, 844-236-6010 tomorrow. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of my Truth Treatment skincare products, head over to truthtreatments.com. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Have yourselves a spectacular, awesome, wonderful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.